The spring is compressed 200 millimeters at the top of this two wedge system. I want to know how big P has to be to move that big wedge C. I've got two wedges here. The easiest one to draw your free body diagram of is C because we know that P is going this way. So the friction forces have to oppose the motion. If this P moves the wedge left, the friction forces FBC and FCD have to be opposing that motion and they have to be accompanied by, of course, the normal forces. Once we know which direction the forces, friction forces go in, we can take equal and opposite forces on the other wedge and now look at what other forces act on wedge B. Clearly we'll have a spring force from the compression of the spring at the top. If wedge C moves to the left, then wedge B moves up. So the friction force at AB has to be down and the normal force will be to the right. Once we've got our free body diagrams, the next question is where do you want to start with your solving of them? The number I have is FS, the spring force. That's KS. That's where I'm actually given a spring constant and an actual displacement so I get a real number. That lets me think that perhaps I want to start by writing my equations of equilibrium for the place where I have a number. So if I take the sum of the forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero, and then I can take the sum of the forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero, I have now on my equations of equilibrium for wedge B my 100 newton load and four unknowns, the two normals and the two frictions. But really, we know that motion has to impend here because if wedge C moves to the left, wedge B has to move to get out of its way. So I know that FAB is going to be 0.4 times NAB and FBC is going to be 0.6 times NBC and there isn't any way around it. Now I can plug these two into the equations of equilibrium and I get two equations and two unknowns. That I can solve. That gives me NBC is 210.40 and if you want to, you can go back and say NAB is 176.39, but we're not actually going to need that number. It's this one that we really need to know. That's the 210 Newton load for NBC. Why do we really need to know that? Because we're going for P. We want to know what P is. So if we look at the equations of equilibrium for wedge C, we have effects from the two friction forces at CD and, or rather the friction and normal force at CD and the friction and normal force at BC. And we can write down the sum of the forces in the y direction as well. The sum of the forces in the y direction is going to equal zero rather than equaling P. Again, motion has to impend because we're asked to find out when the wedge moves. So I have FCD is going to be equal to 0.4 times NCD and FBC is going to be 0.6 times NBC. But I know what NBC is so I can say FBC is 126.24 newtons. If you plot all of the friction forces and all of the known values for your normal force at BC into the equations of equilibrium for wedge C, you can solve and you get NCD is 197.77. Substituting back in, you get P is 303.99. So P needed to move the wedge to the left is 304 pounds.